Yeah. Now, is it going to take a few minutes to set things up, or okay? I, I, I thought while you guys are setting up, I could just go ahead and just start a, a message, and I'm going to finish it online. And then when you guys are ready, we'll just stop right there. And then I'll push the button, let, let the kids know to come on over. Well, why don't we go ahead and, and start? And if she comes or the tabs and Visi comes, that's great. If not, then we can check on them. And let's go ahead and open up in a word of prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for the day. Father, we even thank you for the rain that you've blessed us with. Father, we just pray uh, with the cooler weather coming, we just pray for. Uh, even thinking about the homeless right now, that we just pray for the protection and the warmth and the shelter. Father, we just thank you for this day. Thank you for the, the fellowship we are about to have, and we just ask your blessings on this all. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, Julie went ahead and took the kids back to try and give them a little bit of a Sunday school class. Whenever we get everything set up, I'll push the button, they'll, they'll come over. So we'll bypass the singing. Um, do we have any um Praise or prayer request to share at this time. Any other request or any other praises? Got somebody there. All right. Why don't we go ahead and go go ahead and pray then, and uh, we'll just also bless the Lord for the food at this time too. Gracious Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this day. Father, if there's any other request that has not been mentioned. Any unspoken, we lift those before you. We ask that your will be done. And Father, we thank you for this time of fellowship. We lift before you. We ask your blessings on the food as nourishment to our bodies and that we just have an enjoyable time of uh, fellowship and, and having uh, socialism, uh, having a time where we socialize together, Father. And Father, we just lift uh, this time before you. And we are just going to ask your blessings on this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, if that's K, I I don't know. But I thought what I can go ahead and do is just kind of start the message. And then I'm going to finish it whenever you guys are done. I'll finish it online. So, okay. And uh, if you need to, to help, you're, you're welcome to. Sorry, you all. I lost track of time. That's okay. We're glad that you made it. Well, they should be done pretty quickly, so I probably won't be too too much into this. But uh, for now, I'll go ahead and open up to Genesis chapter 3. Genesis 3, verse 17. She's uh, in the Sunday school class. She's going to come over and says we're all ready. She started early, didn't she? Well, yeah, she knew that uh, we weren't going to have a full Sunday school class. I've got a car out here. Okay. Do you need some help? Or? Let's go ahead and uh, look at Genesis 3, verse 17. We looked at the earth, and we look at the thorns, and now we're looking at thistles. It says, Unto Adam, he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree <coughs> of which I command thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake, and sorrow shalt thou eat of it. All the days of thy life, thorns and thistles. Thorns and thistles shall bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. And so, since we've talked about the earth, we've talked about thorns today, we talked about thistles, that it shall bring forth. Thistles, um, the ground is going to bring forth. There are many Hebrew words for thistle. Uh, some of the words, and I thought I'd put it on the screen, but let me read, read them to you. Kotz, Dardar, Barkin, and Hoa, there's many others. The first, very first mention of thistles appears in the beginning of Genesis, after Adam and Eve. Uh, they eat from the forbidden tree, and God curses the land. Thorns and thistles will bring forth to you. So this is the first reference of thistles. Thistles 
what it does is it represents desolation or it represents the wilderness. And we see a correlation where Christ spent time in the wilderness. About 20 different words relate to some kind of uh, prickly or thorny plant. They are one of the most common wildflowers in Israel, rapidly taking over any open patch of wasteland or unintended me meadows. Israel has many v varieties of thistles, most of them in shades of pink and purple, but also in bright yellow from the Syrian and spotted golden thistles to the artichokes and holy milk thistle and the cherry purple globe thistles which do not landscape with color at the brownest part of the dry season. Now, dardar, the, uh, the thistle, uh, gets its name from the centaur Chiron, who is said in mythology to have uh, taught us healing powers of herbs. The Hebrew word dardar occurs two times in two different verses in the Hebrew Bible, and if you ever saw the film Braveheart, for example, there's a scene in there near the beginning where William is handed a thistle by a young little girl. Let's see if you got that. The Reddit shares about this thistle at the beginning of Braveheart. William has handed a flower, and this uh, this hints not only at his future with the young girl Neuron, 
but the flower is a thistle, Scotland's national emblem. So she is, in a sense, she's giving a hint of not only his future, she's also giving him Scotland. I would say subliminally there's also an indication of turmoil, suffering, and pain that William's going to face through the experience. This is based on a true story here. And uh, eventually he's even going to experience the death of his wife, loss of many who fight for liberty, and ultimately loses his own life in the battle of freedom. The thistle is used to signify a worthless person in the parable of Joash, king of Israel. Thorns are often mentioned as growing up in places given to desolation. Shakespeare.org shares that in Victorian England that the thistle signified pain, aggression, and intrusion. Receiving a bouquet with thistles would have been interpreted as a warning against meddling in other people's businesses. People are probably the most negative association of thistle is with evil. According to a legend back in the Middle Ages, the plant got its negative reputation because it grew in cemeteries. And then, as mentioned earlier, the Lord himself spent time in the wilderness, which is a representation or symbol of the thistle of being in the wilderness. Mark chapter 1, verse 9, as well as uh, Luke chapter 4 verse 1 talks a little bit more about that. And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized of John in the Jordan. And straightway coming up out of the water, he saw the, the heavens open and the spirit like a dove descending upon him. And there came a voice from heaven saying, Thou art my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And immediately the spirit driveth him into the wilderness and he was there in the wilderness for 40 days, tempted of Satan, and was in the wild, was with the wild beast, and the angels ministered unto him. If you cross-reference that into Luke chapter 4, starting with verse 1, we see more detail regarding the wilderness. Are we ready? All right, I'll go ahead and finish this part online. If you want to watch it, I'll have it posted next, next Sunday. And I've already said the blessing on the food, so why don't we go ahead and, and join in the fellowship and, the, and in the food there. Now if you cross-reference this with Luke chapter 4, here we see more details regarding this a wilderness experience. Luke 4, 1 and following it says, And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the, into the wilderness, being forty days tempted of the devil. And in those days he did nothing, and when they were ended, he afterward hungered. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command the stone to be made bread. And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written, that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And the devil, taking him up into a high mountain, showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, all this power I will give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will give it. If thou therefore wilt worship me, and shall be thine, all shall be thine. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written. A second time we see that it is written. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And he brought unto and he brought him to Jerusalem and set him on a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from hence. For it is written, now here's Satan using it is written, He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee, and their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. 
And Jesus answered and said to, unto him, It is said, not written, but said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And when the devil had ended all the temptations, he departed from him for a season. Now, in Matthew 4, 11, actually verses 1 through 11, we see that the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels come and minister unto him. It was in the wilderness where the Lord fasted, he prayed and he hungered, and with the physical weakness the devil tempted Christ, and yet Christ did not sin. He did not yield or give in to temptations that was tossed his way. Point four, every curse given to man in Genesis was taken on by Christ and fulfilled. Christ fulfilled the curse. He, he accepted the penalty and the punishment of every curse given. The ground or earth was cursed and Christ took upon him the punishment of the curse as he had a crown of thorns placed on his head as we saw last week. And he became a curse for us while hanging on the tree of, or the cross. The thorns signified in, in the parable of the sower as one who was choked out from the truth of God's word. They were placed uh, the thorns were placed on his head. Remember the thorns represent the desires and wants and temptations of this, that this world offers. And listening to the deceit, the lies, and being enticed by the wealth of the individual is choked out from understanding the word of God and allowing it to guide and influence their life. The person is not fruitful as a result of the thorns choking them. We've seen the ground cursed with thorns and thistles, but we also see the serpent is cursed. Genesis 3.14 says, And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all the cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Note, man was formed from the dust of the earth. The serpent is cursed to eat the the earth's dust from the for the remainder of its life and there will be many enemy relationships between the woman and the serpent and the seed of the woman will inquire well I'm sorry will injure the head of the snake this is a prophecy from God sharing how through the seed of the woman will come the Savior which we see from Mary and the Lord Christ bruised the serpent's efforts by overcoming sin and death through his actions and his time on the cross and in the grave. So just to, to recap here, the curse of sin brought not only thorns as seen in last week's message, but also thistles. Thistles represent desolation or wilderness and is used to signify a worthless person. The Lord spent some time in the wilderness showing not worthlessness, but worthiness, his strength and power that comes through the word of God. Every curse given to man in Genesis was taken on by Christ and fulfilled. And he had his heel bruised when crushing the head of the serpent, metaphorically, on the cross. Our sins, all sins, sins past, present, and even sins not yet committed, but we, but we will have all been, they will all have been paid for in full. They all have been paid for in full. By Jesus Christ. He paid the debt in full. And because we are now presented spotless through the blood of Jesus, our motivation needs to be, to be lived as spotless as possible through the strength of Christ, according to the Word of God. Jesus Christ is here to help us in our journey in life. Consider this poem, which is titled Footprints in the Sand. It says, One night a man had a dream. He dreamed he was walking along the beach with the Lord. Scenes from his life flashed across the sky, and he noticed two sets of footprints in the sand, one belonging to him and the other to the Lord. When the last scene of his life was, had flashed before him, he recalled that at the lowest and saddest times of his life, there was only one set of footprints. Dismayed, he asked, Lord, you said that once I decided to follow you, you'd walk with me all the way. I don't understand why, and when I needed you the most, you would leave. The Lord replied, My precious child, I love you, and I would never leave you. 
during your times of trial and suffering when you saw only one set of footprints. That was when I carried you. Let's close in a word of prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, as we come before you, thank you for uh, all that Christ has done for us on the, on the cross. Thank you for loving us so much that you sent your only begotten Son. And thank you for allowing Jesus Christ to, to give, to, to show his love by giving his life on the cross, by paying in full the sins, every sin that we have ever committed, are committing, or will commit. Father, we've talked about the earth being cursed, bringing forth thorns and thistles, and how Christ has taken that curse and fulfilled it in full on the cross. We thank you, Father, that through Jesus Christ, through his blood, his death, his burial, his resurrection, that our sins are paid in full and that we can reunite with you and have fellowship and a relationship with you. And we pray that you just help us to continue to draw closer to you, that our lives be fulfilled in such a way that others will see you in us and that they will want to know you and have a relationship with you as well. Father, I lift our heavenly family before you. I pray for each and every one. I thank you for those that attend each Sunday at church and for those that to follow up with us online each, each week. We just ask your blessings on our heavenly family. We lift our members before you and we ask that your will be done in their lives. And we just lift this day before you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.